All right, welcome back. We are starting a new unit today. This is uh, chapter 16 in your textbook entitled Reaction Energy. Of course, we're going to have some new vocabulary and uh, some exciting new things to learn about. We're going to start with talking about something called enthalpy of a reaction. Now, another name for enthalpy is heat, so we can call that heat of a reaction, but enthalpy is synonymous with that. So, uh, for instance, if I have a reaction, just a very generic one, A and B react to form C and D plus heat. Now, heat will be symbolized by delta H. Remember our fireplace and the little girl that was going towards or away from the fire in a previous lecture? That delta H is the symbol for heat. Now, what we didn't talk about is the fact that we can represent heat as having either a positive or a negative sign. So I can always write it on the right-hand side of the equation, um, and I can give it a sign as being positive or negative. For instance, let me, t let me show you this. Uh, delta H, that is equal to the heat content of my products. So the total heat of my products added together minus the heat content of my reactants added together. The resultant will be the delta H. Now, it turns out, and think about this as we talk about this, if the heat content of the products is greater than the heat content of the reactants, heat is gained from the surroundings. It has to be. If my products have more heat than what I started with, where did that heat come from? Well, it had to be gained or added from the surroundings. Therefore, delta H is considered to be positive, and the reaction is termed endothermic. So if we have to add heat to our reaction, if my products have more heat than what I started with, we have to add heat, that reaction is called endothermic, and the sign for delta H is positive. Okay, so if you take a look at this graph here, and this shows up better on your notes, I'm not quite sure how good it's going to show up on the video, but if we um, have, if we're over here, this is an endothermic reaction, if our reactants start with this much energy, and our products have this much energy, where do we get the additional heat from? Right? We have to add it from the surroundings, so delta H is greater than zero, or positive. Now the opposite. What if the heat content of my reactants is greater than the heat content of my products? So these guys here have more energy than what I end up with. Where does the extra energy go? Well, heat is going to be released or given off to the surroundings. Delta H would have a negative sign, and these reactions, since heat is being released, are called exothermic. Now let's take a look at this first graph here. Here we see our reactants with all sorts of energy. See, they have a high, delta, uh, a high heat content here. My products have a smaller heat content. So during the course of the reaction, heat is being released. Well, where is it released? Well, it's released to the surroundings, and that would be considered exothermic. When that happens, the sign for delta H is negative, and once again we call that an exothermic reaction. Now, the delta H of a reaction is also called the enthalpy of a reaction. So, let's talk about something called enthalpy of formation. Here's its symbol, delta H sub F. The F stands for formation. Let's define it first. The definition of enthalpy of formation is the quantity of heat required or released when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. and that would be in their elemental state. So, the quantity of heat required, forgot the D there, or released when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. Let me give you a good example. 
the heat of formation of nitrogen oxide is positive 90.3. Now think about this, there's a positive sign here. This means 90.3 kilojoules is absorbed or added, remember delta H is positive, when one mole of nitrogen oxide is made from its elements. So let's write the reaction for the formation of NO from its elements. So we're going to form NO, there's my compound and I'm making one mole, and I don't have to write the number one there. What are the elements that make up nitrogen oxide? Well, of course, they're nitrogen and oxygen. You wouldn't think it would be barium and hydrogen, would you? Of course not. We're forming NO. So the elements that make up that compound are nitrogen and oxygen. Now, some might question, why did you write N2 and O2? Why not just N plus O? Remember, elementally, there are seven diatomic elements. We call them the Brinkelhoff elements, don't we? Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Those, those elements come in pairs in their elemental state. So, it's N2 plus O2, and to make one mole of this compound, I need half of a mole of N2 and half of a mole of O2, and I will make one mole of NO. So, the heat required for that, how do I know it's required? Well, delta H is positive, is 90.3 kilojoules per mole of NO formed. So, next question. What would be the energy absorbed if two moles of NO were formed? It's not a big deal. We have two moles of NO being formed, and don't we know one mole of NO requires 90.3 kilojoules of energy, so two moles would require 180.6 kilojoules. Okay? Pretty straightforward. The heat of formation is the quantity of heat required or released, in this case it's required, to form one mole of a compound from its elements. Okay, let's try another one. The heat of formation of methane is negative 74.8. Negative. This means that 74.8 kilojoules of energy is released. Remember, delta H is negative, that means it's exothermic, when one mole of methane, CH4, is made from its elements. So let's write an equation representing the formation of one mole of methane. So I'll put the compound CH4 on the right hand side, and of course it's being formed from its elements. The elements that make up CH4 are obviously carbon and hydrogen. Once again, why did I call that H2 instead of just H? You're right, it's a diatomic element. Why didn't I put a small 2 after carbon? You're right again, carbon is not a diatomic element. So, I put a 2 in front of H2 to balance the equation because I'm making uh, four hydrogens on this side. So C and 2H2 form CH4. Now the delta H of this reaction is negative 74.8. Now here's an interesting question. Let's think about this for a minute. How much energy, I'm asking, would be consumed when two moles of CH4 is decomposed? Now think about that question for a second. I'm decomposing CH4. Is that the same reaction as what I see up here? If you said no, you're correct, because up here I'm forming CH4. What do you think the reaction would look like if I were decomposing CH4? You are correct. We would write the one above backwards. So CH4 would decompose into C and two H2s. Now the heat of that reaction would be a positive 74.8 kilojoules. Why positive? Well, think about the law of conservation of energy. If it gives off 74.8 kilojoules of energy when it's formed, doesn't it make sense that it would consume that same amount of energy when it was decomposed? So, let that be a lesson to you. When you write a reaction backwards, delta H's sign is changed. The magnitude's the same, but the sign is changed. Now, I still haven't answered my question, because my question is for two moles of CH4. So, we have two moles of CH4 being decomposed. We're going to go from moles of CH4 
to kilojoules and isn't it 74.8 kilojoules per mole? So 2 times 74.8, oh what the heck, we'll be lazy. We can use our cheap calculator and we have 74.8 times 2 gives me 149.6 kilojoules would be my answer. Now, why don't you try one? Let's read this question and then on your own you're going to pause this and you're going to see if you can do it without my help. Then when you're finished, go ahead and unpause it and see how I did it and see how well you did. The heated formation of methanol, CH3OH, is negative 238.5 kilojoules per mole. Let's write a reaction showing the formation of one mole of this compound from its elements. So take a minute, pause this, and see if you can do it without my help. All right, so here we go. We're back. Let's see if your reaction looks like mine. I'm forming one mole of this compound. CH3OH from its elements. So what elements did you choose? Hopefully you didn't choose uranium or sodium or gold. We are going to choose carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, what is elemental carbon? It is C. Very good. What is elemental hydrogen? H2. Isn't that one of my diatomic elements? And what is elemental oxygen? O2. Now we need to balance this to form one mole of this compound. So one carbon and one carbon. Perfect. We have four hydrogens on this side, so I need two H2s on this side. And I only need one oxygen on the product side. So if you put the fraction one half in front of O2, you did a great job. Now, the delta H of this reaction is negative. 238.5 kilojoules. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Now, another way to write this is as such. We can have C and 2H2 plus 1 half O2 reacts to form CH3OH. Now, since I'm giving off heat, see that sign is negative, I can put plus 238.5 kilojoules of heat. That's another way to write this reaction. Whenever a reaction is endothermic, you can add, or excuse me, I said I misspoke, whenever a reaction is exothermic, you can write the heat given off as a product. Now, how would I write the heat um, required if it were an endothermic reaction? Well, let's write this one backwards, okay, because in the forward reaction, heat is released. What about the backwards reaction? What if I'm decomposing it? Well, I would have CH3OH being decomposed into its elements. C and 2H2 plus a half of an O2. Now, obviously, heat's not given off over here. Remember, when I write it in this direction, heat's a product. But when I flip the equation around, the heat must be a reactant. So I would have to add 238.5 kilojoules on this side of the reaction. When I go to the right, it's endothermic. When I go the other way, when I flip the equation, or, excuse me, when I go to the right, it's exothermic. Well, it's twice now. When I flip it around, it's an endothermic reaction. All right. Now, let's just finish this page for the day. Um, your text will list the heat of formation for many compounds. It will also list other thermodynamic uh, data that we're going to be talking about in this chapter. For right now, we'll just take a look at this table here. This is standard enthalpies of formation of some common compounds. So if we look at one that maybe we just talked about, CH3OH, we have the heat of formation as being negative 238.7. Uh, in our data, we just used 238.5, so you'll notice that some data tables, we get a tiny variation, but don't worry about that. All right? So this table, along with a similar table in your textbook, will be helpful when you do your homework. Now, you will also notice, uh, when you look in the back of your book for your thermodynamic data, the heat of formation of an element is listed as zero. So why would the heat of formation of an element be zero 
Think about that for a second. Alrighty. The heat of formation of an element would be zero because remember, your definition for heat of formation is the formation of one mole of a compound from its elements. So we are not forming a compound. Okay, all you have is an element. The heat of formation of any element will always be zero. Now sometimes the data tables like this one will omit the heats of formation of an element. You should know that those are zero. Oftentimes other data tables will include the heat of formation of an element and they will put zero next to them. So keep that in mind, the heat of formation of any element is zero. All right, next time we see each other, it's a pretty important lecture. We're going to talk about an important concept in chemistry called Hess's Law. So stay tuned for Hess's Law.